Today I'm going to be forging an engraving hammer. They're also referred to as a jeweler's hammer. It's basically just a small hammer with a wide face that's used to drive very light chisels. The material I'm using today is a short length of 5 8 hexagonal steel that I'm recycling from a crowbar. There are a couple of ways you can approach forging the face of this hammer. The natural thing would be to put it in the vise and then use that to support the work while you're upsetting the end of the bar. The problem with that is the vise jaws suck the heat out of the bar so quickly. You're going to be cooling the metal too much and you're going to be putting a lot of stress in the steel and that could cause some fractures that could show up later on. So what I'm doing here is using a very light hammer and I'm just concentrating on mushrooming the end of the bar. I don't need to push the bar back into a huge mass. I just need to spread the end of the bar. So I'm using light hammer blows. I'm keeping the metal off of the anvil so it doesn't cool too quickly. And I'm just taking my time until I get the shape that I want. The angle that you hit the metal is really important. As you can see here, I'm not driving it right on the end. I'm hitting it at about a 30 degree angle on the end of the bar. And this is doing a couple of things. First of all, the bar is actually being driven down towards the anvil, so I'm not taking the shock with my hands. Also, as I'm driving it down, it's sort of eliminating the tendency for the bar to bend the way you normally would get that bend on the end of a bar when you're upsetting. And as you progress further, that bottom edge is going to start getting shaped by the corner of the anvil. So the top edge is being upset with the hammer, the bottom edge is being shaped a little bit with the anvil, and basically the whole bar is staying straight because it really can't move anywhere. So you just keep hammering and rotating the bar as you go so you can just develop the shape very gradually and in a controlled manner. It may not seem to be doing a whole lot, but once you can get that edge to a point where it starts hooking around the corner of the anvil, things start moving around pretty quickly. As long as you keep that mushroom shape under control, it won't curl all the way around and create a cold shut on the underside of the hammer face. Here I'm a few heats further along and I have the shape pretty well defined so I can move to my anvil block that has a very tight radius on the corner. And I'm going to use that to further refine the shape of the hammer face. With this project, it's basically a grinding and a filing project, so I'm not really concerned about forging the entire shape to the final dimensions. I just need to get the masses where I need them. The next thing that I need to do is change the shape of the hammerhead from a hexagonal to a square cross section. That'll just make it easier to drill and punch the holes for the eye. Again, you don't have to go too crazy with this. Everything's going to be ground and filed to shape later on. And the final operation is just to create an offset that'll represent the peen of the hammer. The peen is actually not used for this hammer. It's just decorative and it basically counterbalances the head a little bit and makes it easier to swing. At this point I'm going to bring the bar back up to a critical temperature and let it cool very very slowly in some ashes and that'll allow me to drill out the holes for the eye of the hammer. So here I have the holes drilled in. They're a little bit crooked, but that's okay. Uh, the punch is just going to be used to open up the eye large enough so I can get a file in there to finish the actual eye shape. So as long as I have enough material to get that final dimensions, I'm okay. And as you can see, I'm just going to be using a very narrow punch to tear through that center web and get the eye started. 
Here I have the head set up on the vise in my hardy hole. That's going to allow me to support the head without damaging the face. I'm going to be punching halfway through the hole from one side and then I'll turn it around and punch the other side to get the hole clean all the way through. At this point I'm going to use a slightly larger punch that's going to get the eye to close to its final dimensions. It'll still be crooked and it'll be a little off-centered, but again I'm going to be filing this to shape, so I'm not really too concerned about this. With really small hammers like this I find it hard to get everything lined up, especially if you're working alone. So the best thing to do is to punch the eye a little bit undersized and then file it to shape when you're done. So my main objective here is to really just get the hole large enough so I can get a file in there to finish the job. Here I have the hammer head set up on a couple of bars so I can drive the drift completely through the hammer head. The drift that I use for my hammer eyes is parallel on the narrow edges of the drift and it's tapered on the wide edge of the drift. So when I punch the eye, it's tapered on the sides and it's parallel on the front and back of the head. It's not hourglass shaped like a commercially made hammer head, but I'll be explaining this further in the next video when I actually fit the handle to this head. In this heat, I'm just going to do what I can to straighten out the eye so I don't have a lot of filing to do to try to get it back in center. At this point, I'm going to do as much grinding as I can while it's still attached to the bar. I'll pretty much bring it down to its final dimensions. I'm going to file the eye to its final shape and get it basically looking like I want, and then I'm going to cut it from the bar. So here it is cut from the bar. I'll spend a little bit of time filing the end of the peen where the grinder marks are, but basically I'm going to leave it as is. It's a working tool. It's not a showpiece. I'm not going to spend a lot of time polishing this. I'm also not going to bother heat treating this hammer head. It's made out of a higher carbon steel, so that alone is going to give it all the durability that it's going to need for the light duty hammering that it's going to be doing. Hi, I'm Dennis and thanks for watching. If you're interested in supporting this channel, the simplest way of course is to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have questions and you want to contact me directly, you can do so by emailing me at either one of the addresses that I have listed here. It may take me a couple of days, but I will get back to you. Of course, financial support is always welcome. The only product that I produce is the information contained in these free videos. So if you like the work that I'm doing and the videos that I'm putting out and you can spare a couple of dollars a month, consider becoming a patron by clicking the orange Patreon logo at the bottom of the screen. Thank you and we'll see you next time.